Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we've got an episode of Sniper Sunday, the series where I'm going to be playing the recon class with either semi-automatic or bolt-action rifles and talking about tactics and tips. And we'll be covering some general sniper tactics today, but also talking about the 338 recon, which is something that I was going to master for this video, but I was only like 100 kills in and getting 400 kills with any bolt-action rifle is hard, uh, but especially with the 338 recon, which is... Pretty much a shitty sniper rifle. I'll just say it. It's not good. It doesn't have anything good going for it. If you like sniping, this has got no awesome characteristics. And quite literally, there's just about nothing that the 338 Recon does well. And it's not even one of those weapons that kind of does everything somewhat decently. It's pretty much a weapon that does everything somewhat crappily compared to the other bolt action rifles out there. I think it just kind of got passed over. And that's what happens in a game when you have 13 different bolt action snipe rifles. It's very hard to balance them and make them unique in a way because bolt action rifle is a bolt action rifle. You've got damage per shot, rate of fire maybe that you can slightly tweak and then magazine size and beyond that there just isn't too much that you can do with these rifles to make them unique or interesting. And I'm certainly not going to give the weapon designers a hard time by looking over the 338. I mean there's about a billion different guns in Battlefield all competing with each other for different ranges and effectiveness and yeah sometimes there's going to be one that just kind of sucks all around and sadly it's the 338. 338 Recon. Now in real life this gun is made by Desert Tactical Arms and it's called a Stealth Recon Scout. And uh, Recon Scout kind of seem like synonymous terms but whatever. Stealth Recon Scout. Sort of a goofy name. Now it is one of the few existing bullpup sniper rifles and it shaves off about 11 inches to the barrel length or the overall length of the weapon because of its bullpup design which is a cool feature although something that I'm not sure you would need in a sniper rifle because generally speaking bullpup uh, makes the weapon smaller profile you can carry it in vehicles if you would need to you can carry it in more compact places but if you're off in the woods or out in the open like the desert or something like that and trying to shoot targets at 300 meters or even further away you're probably not too concerned with the length of your overall rifle it just seems like a funny feature to include in a rifle that shoots such a large caliber round but whatever i'm sure the real life version of this rifle is just fine overall it's just the in-game version isn't particularly great i guess you could say it has decent hip fire but it's still beat out by the cs5 so if you're going for a hip fire rifle there's better rifles to pick from just as there's better rifles to pick from in every single category Again, crappy rifle. But if you employ good sniping tactics, you can still do well with a crappy bolt action rifle, as you'll see from my gameplay here. Now I use a pretty standardized setup on all my bolt action rifles, unless I'm going for something really weird, but it's usually an eight times scope. People can get by with anything they want in this department. If you want to use seven times, six times, whatever you're most comfortable with, I think the eight times has some of the best dot reticles on it and it's the simplest and easiest scope to line up your targets with but then i also like to use the 14 times variable zoom and i'll activate this sometimes when i'm shooting at targets that are extremely long range or if i'm just having a little trouble missing a few too many shots at further ranges i'll activate that 14 times scope to get those more precise headshots and then of course there's this straight pull bolt, the option I will always run with no matter what because the alternative is a bipod, pretty much the last thing I would ever want to use on a sniper rifle in Battlefield 4. Something that I would absolutely consider using on any sort of precision rifle in real life or in more realistic military sims like say Arma, which ironically doesn't have working bipods in it. But uh, anything to stabilize a gun for longer range accuracy is very, very important. It just doesn't really work in Battlefield because all you have to do is hold your breath. That stabilizes the rifle. And if you're sitting still too long, then you yourself are going to get sniped by somebody else. So it's just never worked out for me. And the sniping game is largely dictated by the fact that it's so easy to snipe from a standing position. Now, it is possible to shoot accurately from a standing position at, say, 300 meters but that takes incredible practice in real life and you're not going to do it by running to one location quickly raising your rifle and hitting an accurate headshot at say 300 meters or something like that it's just going to be 
almost impossible to do that in real life, as is just about all gunplay in this game, but it would be interesting if they made it much harder to shoot sniper rifles in Battlefield, requiring more of a prone position to take accurate shots. In fact, playing Heroes and Generals recently, sniping is much more challenging in that game, and you really do have to go prone to get accurate shots off. Also, spotting is a lot harder to do in that game, so you have much more reason to actually go prone, because you might not be spotted for quite some time. Now, something that I've adopted recently is carrying a suppressed sidearm for the recon class. If somebody is close by to you, or there's multiple guys close to you, you need to be able to kill one of them while staying suppressed on that minimap, because if you pop up on that minimap and you got multiple targets to deal with, it's going to be almost impossible to deal with those multiple threats with a sidearm, uh, unless you get crazy lucky with your bolt action and then are able to finish them off with a, a sidearm. It's just not going to happen, and it's not a good plan. Even uh, even if you are the world's best aggressive recon player, it's still a very unlikely situation you're going to be able to win those CQB firefights against multiple targets. Now, I love that Wayne Gretzky quote, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, which is why I'm taking these shots at the little bird here. All you need is that one awesome pilot headshot to take out a little bird that's been harassing your team. All of this gameplay here is coming from the new Conquest small server that I started up with a few Battlefield friends and it's been a blast to play in. Limited vehicle use and lots of infantry action, which is perfect for sniping, especially in some of these maps like Whiteout where there's a lot of long range gameplay. And that really is noob tip of the day for sniping. Pick the right map for sniping. If you're sniping on Operation Lockers and not doing well, it pretty much serves you right. There's not a lot of reasons for you to be doing well on that map, even if you are the world's greatest sniper. Now I was a little frustrated with the sniper rifle and I ended up aiming for body shots a little more often than I probably should have just because uh, I was hating the travel time on this gun and just not enjoying it in general but uh, if you do have the patience and the time aim for those headshots more often than not headshots are going to give you the kill where the body shot is just going to give you a kill assist or it's going to allow a assault player to run away heal up and re-engage you with full health all over again I can't tell you how many times I've gotten a good body shot on somebody they run away heal up somebody else kills them and I don't even get a kill assist because they've already healed to maximum health. Now, if you're not a particularly great sniper, but you like practicing it, you want to try and get good at it, but you don't want to feel like you're letting down your teammates or just taking up space on your team, not contributing to the objectives, try hanging out close enough to objectives where your squad mates are really going to want to spawn on you to continue the assault. You can then give them sniper cover as they pursue towards their objectives, and it's usually the best situation to snipe in anyway when people are shooting at your teammates and not you. So anyway, that wraps it up for this episode of Sniper Sunday. I'll have to master the 338 Recon another day. Be sure to check out the new server that we set up. The link is in the video description. And as always, guys, I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off. <laughs>